Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Bar in the Kitchen, really, I should say, welcome to the St. Patrick's Day theme for the next couple of weeks. I love hearing from you. A few days ago, I asked on Instagram, what are some Patrick, St. Patrick's Day favorites of yours if you celebrate that you feel like I should recreate? Now, we all know everybody makes corned beef and cabbage, which by the way, to my shock, a lot of you said that in, uh, in Ireland, you don't even make corned beef and cabbage. So you're going to have to tell me because I'm clearly not from there. Uh, but I was gathering lots of really good information. We were chatting. A lot of you even told me about the recipes that your mom makes or that's been, they've been making for years on St. Patrick's Day. So it really thrills me to have those kinds of conversations with you. But anyway, having said that, um, we have nailed down on sharing a few delicious recipes you can serve to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, but really they're delicious no matter what. Today is a very, very random Tuesday afternoon uh, and we're gonna eat it <laughs> and it's gonna be delicious. Tonight we're making cold cannon, which I am hoping I'm spelling that, I'm saying that right, which I think I am. Uh, and it's really a lovely, like deliciously rich buttery mash that we are going to then stir in some cooked greens and spring onions, scallions, and it is phenomenal. I've been playing around with recipes, I've been cooking, we're gonna make Guinness stew, we're gonna make brown bread, we are going to make bangers and mash, we're gonna make lots of really delicious things that I feel like are gonna be such a hit if you are gonna be celebrating, like I said, or not. Okay, what am I doing here? As I am peeling some Yukon Gold. A lot of you in my DMs on Instagram, when we were chatting about this, you were telling me that what makes a really good mash for both your bangers and mash, or if you're gonna solve cold cannon with your bangers or just cold cannon, is using a very sweet buttery potato like a Yukon Gold. And when you say that, I jump to it. Because as you know, I am spud. If I were to be a vegetable, I'd be a potato because it is loved by all and it is my favorite vegetable. <laughs> um, I love all potatoes. Really rusted is my favorite, like a rusted Idaho potato is my favorite because it's very like fluffy and it's very, um, I say it's very dry, but it's hard for me to explain. But in this particular recipe, a really nice golden buttery Yukon gold is the way to go. I'm gonna peel and I'm gonna chop. Okay, rinse the potatoes, give them a rough chop. And now I'm gonna plunge them into some cold water. Ah! Give myself a little, little shower roux. Always start potatoes in cold water so that they cook nice and evenly. While that happens, we're gonna talk greens. I'm using Tuscan kale. I have read so many different things and I have heard from so many of you saying that your mom would use cabbage, she would use a mixture of leftover greens. Um, so it doesn't seem to be like a right or wrong green to use here. Uh, but from what I've gathered, something like kale, whether it's curly kale or Tuscan kale is pretty much the most common. But if you grew up making this dish, eating this dish, or you make this dish and you're from there, I would love to hear from you and I would love to hear the tradition uh, of St. Patrick's Day if you celebrate. I would love to hear, you know, all those things. I always feel like you get to know people. That's why food's so important and it's so powerful. You get to learn about people through food, right? So I would love to hear from you because obviously I didn't grow up celebrating St. Patrick's Day like most people did. We do celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Italy, but we celebrate San, San Patrizio, you know what I mean? Like Saint, Saint it's hard to describe, uh, you know. Santa Laura is on October 19th and I only remember that. I don't remember anybody else, it's because here we don't celebrate. So I'm just removing the thick stems and I'm gonna give these a really nice chop. Okay, we gave the kale a really, really good chop. I like a lot of scallions in this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use like six because they're kind of smallish. If they were really big fat ones, I'd probably just use three or four, but I like a lot of scallions in this, so I'm just gonna go for it. And you're gonna wanna just chop these, slice these pretty thin as well. Ooh, muddle, flying all over the place. Adding just a little butter to a skillet. I like the combination of butter and olive oil. Um, you can just use all butter if you want, which is a bit more traditional. I like the mixture of the two because the butter, all, it makes it nice and rich, but I don't want it to be too rich because remember, we're also gonna be adding butter in the mash. So 
a little bit of butter and a little bit of oil. I just think it's much better balance. I'm waiting for that butter to fully melt. Get nice and hot. Add the kale, nice and finely chopped. And just let that go for a few minutes. You want that to start to soften and cook down. I would say about three to four minutes on a medium heat. And once we're there, we'll add everything, we'll just fill in. These are looking really good. I went ahead and just turned that down a bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and add all of my chopped scallions. And I'm just going to gently keep this cooking together for probably another three to four minutes. I want everything to be kind of nice and soft, but still vibrant green. That would be, that would be sous chef. She's a jumper, okay? She's a jumper. Potatoes are fully cooked. I went ahead and drained them. What I have in here is a little bit of heavy cream. Actually, I lied to you because it is a lot of bit of heavy cream. Um, you can also use a mixture of cream and heavy cream. I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of butter because I want that to be really nice and warm for when we stir everything together. And anytime I make a mashed potato or mash of any kind, by the way, once the water came up to a boil, I added a generous amount of salt because it's really only time to season the inside of the potato itself, kind of like pasta. And I like to reserve a little bit of the, that little cooking water when you mash it somehow. I just feel like you get a better mash. Maybe I'm crazy, but you know, in my mind, it works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash this up nice and fine, as fine as I can get it. If you want to, you can use a ricer, but I really break out the ricer when I'm making, uh, let's see, what do I break out a ricer for? Banzarotti, um, gnocchi, but other than that, I really don't because it's a pain to clean. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and mash this up. We've got the kale mixture ready and waiting. I need to season this really well with black pepper. Go ahead and add the cream and the butter. And you're just gonna mix that up until it's really nice and smooth. Now, some people like their mash, their mash of any kind, um, a little more lumpy, a little more dry. Others like it super creamy and loose and smooth that you can pipe it out. I'm gonna say I'm someone that likes, let's say a combination of both, shall we? That looks good enough for me. Remove the masher, don't move. I am gonna go ahead and use this wooden spoon because we're gonna mix it all together anyway. And that is perfect. I just wanna taste it for seasoning. It looks very good. You just taste it with a little fork. Mmm, so creamy. Needs salt. Potatoes that are under salted, not good. That should be good. Now go ahead and add your greens. Make, mix it all in and just you wait until you put a little, extra, a little extra butter on the top. Mixy mix. Look at that. A nice, glorious. Listen, I'm leaving stuff in the pan because that's a cook's treat and I don't wanna hear it, okay? I don't wanna hear it. That looks magnificent. Then I like a couple extra dabs of butter because as it melts, it starts to kind of pull. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Like so, like that. A little extra grinding of black pepper. To me, black pepper is so important when it comes to a mash because otherwise it tastes like nothing. Listen, the way the Irish like potatoes makes me feel like maybe I should be half Irish because I like potatoes like I like pasta. I like it a lot. Mmm. Mmm. You can see right around in that area right there, the butter is starting to melt. Listen, listen. I'm gonna go in here actually because that is too, I don't wanna mess that up because I gotta take a picture. It's so good. Great texture, great balance with the onions and the kale and the smoothness and richness of the potatoes. Mmm! Now it looks so good. 
The butter is melty and delicious and phenomenal. I can see why it's a classic. I can see why so many of you DM'd me and told me that I had to make it, had to share it with you. It really is so simple, but it's one of those things that is just phenomenal. It just is. LauraInTheKitchen.com has a recipe waiting for you. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.